Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. I've been a fan of FMV games for a long time, and have a real appreciation for the Sega CD, but somehow I had yet to play one of the originals. Until now. Today, I'm talking about Sewer Shark. Sewer Shark was developed by Digital Pictures and was released for Sega CD in 1992. It would later come out on the 3DO as well. It's a rail shooter with a fairly ridiculous story. In a post-apocalyptic future, most of humanity lives underground, while sewer jockeys fly through the sewers to clear them of mutated creatures, which also serve as food. Meanwhile, the rich and powerful live in the island paradise of Solar City. You are a new pilot, given the call sign dog meat, and go out on your first flight. Relax! Pretend it's a game. Maybe it'll even be fun. Shake the tubes, dog meat! There are two main components to the gameplay. One is shooting any creatures you see. Some, like the radigators, are fairly easy targets, while others, like bats, fly around more erratically and are much harder to hit. Neither of these will hurt you, but you do want to hit as many as possible to increase your score, as you need to meet certain thresholds in order to be allowed to continue your game. The other aspect is navigation. You have a robot, called Catfish, that scouts ahead and will give you directions you need to follow. You'll get these three at a time. The critter's at three, six, twelve. As you fly, you'll come across many different junctions, and you need to make turns by holding down the B button and pressing the correct direction in time. There's a little bit of leeway with making mistakes at the start, but later on, if you miss a junction, you'll most likely fly into a wall and explode. The whole time I played this, I had a weird sense of familiarity. I realized after a bit that this reminds me a lot of the Space Mountain level in Capcom's Adventures in the Magic Kingdom on NES, which was my favorite level in that game. So it may be a fairly low bar, but of all the digital pictures games I've played, this one's the best. Unlike many of their other games, in Sewer Shark, the gameplay and the delightfully cheesy cutscenes are not at odds. In Night Trap, Double Switch, or Ground Zero Texas, there are often multiple things going on at once, and you're at risk of missing something important, or even game-ending, if you're not focused on the right thing at the right time. That's not the case here. Instead, you play for a while, then at certain points you get a video message from one of the other characters. This can change depending on how well you're doing. Then, you go back to flying. No conflict but that doesn't make it any less challenging. This is a game that required all of my concentration. No listening to podcasts as I played or I'd lose track of directions. It was so easy to get caught up shooting at a flock of bats and then forget, did I already make the left turn or is that the next one? You also need to keep an ear out for your co-pilot calling out recharge stations and then observe which track has a green light and turn that way. Your energy will be constantly dwindling as you fly, and shooting consumes it even faster. You really want to hit those recharge stations, because if you can't shoot, you can't get any score. Your new call sign is Rat Breath. Turn and burn, Rat Breath. As you get further in the game, you'll be rewarded with a bump in your rank and call sign, and new challenges will arise. Scorpions will appear in the tunnels, and they'll drain your energy if you don't kill them. Then, you'll wind up following a bird-like creature rather than having the directions called out in advance. And finally, you'll be hunted down by the deadly mole machines, who will run right into you if you don't take them down. When you hear the distinctive noise that one of these makes, just start spamming fire. 
The difficulty curve is actually really good, and it makes for an intense 40 minutes to get through the whole game. Of course, Sewer Shark is not completely without mean design decisions, and one of them? It really got me good. I had trouble making it past the halfway point of the game because I just wasn't getting a high enough score. When I finally did it, there was a lengthy cutscene where your ship gets upgraded. I took that moment to relax, have a sip of my latte, pet Lily. So, when near the end of the scene, Ghost ordered me to fire, I didn't do it fast enough. I got yelled at, and then my game was over. Okay, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, fire! You didn't fire, did you? What a milksop Millie you turned out to be! Get out of here! I need a pilot! Not a human dribble glass! Digital Pictures really likes this trick. It happens in Ground Zero, Texas at a similarly frustrating point. And it happens in Night Trap, though that's right near the beginning of the game, so missing it isn't all that bad. Something Sewer Shark does much better is allow for unlimited continues. There are checkpoints every time you get a new call sign, and if you die, you start again from that point. These happen every 10 minutes or so. So the gameplay is surprisingly fun, but what about the rest of it? Well, the cutscenes are about what you'd expect. They're quite cheesy, but at least when it comes to the other pilots, Ghost and Falco, kind of endearing. They're the ones who will be helping you out, even if they bust your balls a bit. And that'll get you there. Unless your pilot's a total pinhead. Turn and burn, babe. Falco out. The game also has some very quotable lines. Will you hurt her? Turn and burn, dog meat! The antagonist of the game is Commissioner Stenchler, who wants to keep everyone else out of Solar City, for reasons. Him and his girl Friday enjoy the high life, and he gets more antagonistic the closer to the city you get. He can end your game if you're not doing well enough. His scenes get increasingly ridiculous as the game goes on. Those are only my quartz string moles, strictly preseason guys. I'm sending down my regular season boys now. They call them the Chainsaw Line. Stenchler is played by Robert Costanzo, who is the only cast member I've seen in other things. If you ever hear a voice who you think is Danny DeVito, but actually isn't, it's this guy. As expected, there is a lot of compression when playing video footage on a Sega CD, and the sewers do get quite repetitive looking, but it's all very well shot and put together. Direction changes based on your inputs are pretty seamless. The game was directed by John Dijkstra, who supervised the team at Industrial Light & Magic on Star Wars. As for music, there's really only one track while you're playing, but it is a banger. It has some excellent bass and a cool kind of dark synthwave sound. I really never got tired of it. Sewer Shark existed long before the Sega CD. It was actually developed for a console called the Hasbro Control Vision, which ran on VHS tapes. Sewer Shark was filmed in 1987, and Night Trap was filmed in 1986 for the same purpose. However, just before the Control Vision was set to launch in 88, Hasbro decided to scrap the project. Tom Zito purchased the rights to the games that had been made for the cancelled console and formed Digital Pictures, who would then go on to transition the games for use on the Sega CD. Sewer Shark sold extremely well when it first came out, and was selected to be bundled with the Model 2 console, making it one of the most abundant and easy-to-find games for the system. Sewer Shark was a really nice surprise. Though it's a game that's often looked down on or just assumed to be bad, I had a lot of fun with it. Though the story is quite ridiculous, I did get that good, cheesy FMV acting, along with gameplay that's actually decent. If any of these types of games could use a modern remake, like Night Trap or Double Switch got, it's this one. Just the change from going from a D-pad to a stick for aiming would be huge. 
If you want to see more, check out my review of Ground Zero Texas, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.